Hello, I'm Peter Bat. And I'm Clara Gibson. And this is Chatterbox News. Yay! And one, although it's been a while, it and has been a while. And, and normally we we focused on local and slightly national issues. Yes. And today, what we're focusing on something that is actually a national issue. Well, it's an but international. It's an issue. international issue, but the thing is that it's having a direct impact on our opportunity to be able to have um, a fair election, I would say a fair general election when the time comes. Yes, I think it also impinges on this nation's uh, right to free speech. Speech, oh indeed. Um, in that the outrage, I would say practised outrage of a certain group of people um, is actually being used to silence um, um, debate. Yes. And so that subject is da 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 anti-Semitism, yes. and particularly this anti-Semitism row that surrounds uh, the Labour Party at the Indeed. moment. Indeed, mm -hmm. and now which is very questionable because as yet I haven't heard a single example of what that anti-Semitism actually is. Have you? Uh, uh, well, no. Other than um, the Labour Party's insistence on separating criticism of Israel uh, from anti-Jewish abuse yes. or anti-Jewish sentiment. Well, you don't want to... I mean, it is wrong to, you know, abuse anybody for any religion. Anti-Semitism is racism, and racism is wrong whoever it's against. Absolutely. The problem I have with this particular debate is that the racism against one group of people, the Jews, mm -hmm. is being focused on and being heightened to a level of importance which is well above other uh, racism against other people. Well, and, what's and particularly being Israel's racism, racism against, the, against the Palestinians. Yes, absolutely. Now, I actually was writing Which has some... got to a new height, really, hasn't it? Would you say it's... <laughs> has it always been... Uh, well, no, it's been stepping up gradually. Yes, it um, has. And, and I think actually the the thing that's happening in the con in the UK at the moment mm -hmm. is that the pro-Israel uh, lobby are looking to absolutely stamp on all criticism of Israel. Uh, Jeremy yes. Corbyn is at, is is getting uh, a lot of this at the moment because he has stood up um, in his long um, political history of standing up against racism he has stood up for Palestinian rights in a way that most political leaders and commentators in this country have failed to do. Why is that so? Is it because of the sponsorship of the Friends of Israel or, or what is it that actually is, means that other people won't, other groups won't stand up in, well, to support the Palestinians? Well, there's partly a thing about coverage. The, uh, the news agenda in this country is um, hopelessly skewed towards the official right. um, Israeli government uh, view. And uh, one of the reasons this is happening is that, at the moment, is because Jeremy Corbyn has a, um, has a serious chance at becoming Prime Minister. Oh yes, they don't and, want that, And do the they? thing that the pro-Israel lobby don't want is someone standing up and actually um, you know, turning the tables on the state of yes, Israel oh, yes. and their murderous, barbaric yes. occupation and theft of Palestinian land. Yeah, oh, absolutely horrifying what's been happening to them. Now, and what's been happening to the Palestinians? Yes. You know. I mean, for instance, um, you only have to look at a series of maps of the land that Israel uh, controls to yeah. see that... It's not the state of Israel that's fighting for its survival, it's the Palestinians. Oh, absolutely. The land's diminished um, but, but also what, what Israel does to the Palestinians in, those t in, in the West Bank and, and Gaza. Yes. Gaza's been under a uh, complete blockade now for more than a decade. Wow. And has been bombed to, to smithereens yes. on numerous occasions. The West Bank has been increasingly colonised by... Jewish settlers. These, oh, yes. are, these are particularly right-wing, aggressive groups. Who kick people out of their homes. Who take people. Burn their olive groves. Or, or just take the land. Or, yeah. 
Um, the Palestinian people in, in, their, in their cities like Nablus or Bethlehem or Jericho are increasingly under curfew, they're yeah. under siege, um, they can be shot without... Um, oh, for being out at, after curfew? Well, no, or if just anyway? Israel is the only state on earth that I'm aware of that has three distinct legal systems. Right. That apportions protections, rights and responsibilities according to race and religion. Right. So if you are a Jewish Israeli in, in the main part of Israel, right. you effectively live in a Western democracy. You have all of the legal yes, protections okay. and rights, mm -hmm. um, that, well, most of them that we would expect here. If you're an Arab Israeli in, right. in the main part of Israel, uh, you don't have as many land rights mm -hmm. and you probably don't have the same legal protections to, for instance, free speech and, and to protest. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're a Palestinian in the occupied territories of the West Bank and Gaza, Got nothing, none you of have it. no rights. You no. live under martial law. Yes. Um, because you can't have a passport. You, you can't, can't leave the country. You can't get in and out. You can't yes. have visitors. Yeah. They, they live under curfew. Yes. Uh, um, transport between towns from area to area is often limited to one hour a day. Wow. Um, and you see, Jewish settlers will have <coughs> the freedom to use these roads whenever All the they time. want. Yes. But Palestinians um, will have to stay behind, um, you know, a, a, a checkpoint right. until they're allowed to go. Wow. I mean, the whole system is not only completely immoral, oh, yes. but it seems to be designed to drive the Palestinians crazy it's with rage. It's worse than apartheid, isn't it, actually? You know, the, uh, sure, there was segregation, and, but did, under apartheid, did, um, were the, did, you know, the black South Africans have absolutely as zero rights as Palestinians? Uh, probably. Mandela, um, well before his death, said that, um, you know, peace activists can never rest until the Palestinians are free. Uh, and, Frank, and again, I think he's completely yes. right. Yes. So, I mean, so coming back to this, I mean, I wanted to do some notes so we could structure this debate. Yeah. But I came across this, actually it wasn't today, it was the 18th of July, but I, in, in doing oh, my right. research... Oh, right, no, because... Um, yeah. I mean, there have been two articles that appeared in The Guardian, because The Guardian seems to be, you know, the forum for where a, a lot of the um, pro-Israeli... Oh, it does um, it appear to be that you No, know, because The Guardian speaks to sort of like, you know, the, as it were, mainstream Labour opinion yes. sort of thing. But I found this article um, by uh, Dr Dave Rich... Um, headlined is a comment piece. Headlines: Labour's anti-Semitism code exposes a sickness in Jeremy Corbyn's party. And reading through this made me so angry yeah. that any attempt at writing any notes um, <laughs> uh, went, Not out, possible. went out the window. <laughs> yes, because basically um, he's talking about the uh, the 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 definition of anti-Semitism according to the IHRA. Yes. Um, the uh, International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, which if you go onto their website, as you can see, is titled Working Definition oh, yes. of Anti-Semitism. Yes, okay. yes. So I'm assuming this doesn't mean that it's... it's set um, in stone. That it's set in stone. Hmm. And basically he and also Labour's um, um, deputy leader, Tom Watson, oh, he yes. was quoted today as saying, Labour faces eternal shame over anti-Semitism, claiming that Labour's... Um, prevarication and refusal to accept the definition of anti-Semitism is shameful. And I would <sighs> argue that he's either blind to what Labour have been trying to do or just cynical or stupid. Or has been corrupted. Well... You see, I, I mean, it's one of my... Having... You know, the, the Dispatches documentary of 2007. By Peter O'Born. Um, which um, described and, and demonstrated how prospective parliamentary candidates of either party, or any party, actually if the moment that they were selected as parliamentary ca uh, candidates would be approached by the Friends of Israel to go to Israel to see the... Um, to be shown the sites, perhaps, you know, <laughs> and to be brainwashed, I 
presume. And that once they had completed this, that then a large sum, and actually Peter Osborne quotes Oborn. something, Oborn, uh, uh, quotes something like £40,000 would be given to into the bank account of the PPC and then um, 40 a thousand into the past, the coffers of the party. And so you sort of wonder, you know, when you have these people who are suddenly speaking out in this way, whether they have been similarly um, schooled. It's funny, because uh, William Haig, um, former leader of the Tory party, he lost funding from the, from the Friends, Conservative Friends of Israel because he did actually speak out against what they were Israel. doing in, in, in Palestine. Indeed. Yes. Um, well, good for him. I didn't know that William Hague had done that. And it sort of goes up in my book a bit. Yes. Um, and I think that shows how the Israel lobby tried, the to, tried to control debate and frame the debate in this country. Yes. And, but they know, do it elsewhere. They do it in oh, the well, States. Absolutely. They do it in South Africa. And so all of this stuff about Russian interference in our elections pales into insignificance yes. compared with the Israel lobby. Yes. But the reason this piece pissed me off so enormously yes. was, uh, I mean, basically, so you've got the, uh, the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism, and then you've got a series of case studies oh, which yes, are designed to illustrate how the definition should be employed. Yes. And the Labour Party basically modified or wouldn't accept in, in their original state, which is a working definition, yes. Four of them, because uh, one, they they did they don't believe it's anti-Semitic. Uh, it's not necessarily anti-Semitic to criticise Israel. No, I exactly. Agree. I would agree. And in and in basically taking them hook, line, and sinker, you're effectively. I mean, they're, they're legally unworkable mm -hmm. because of their limitation on free speech, which is something right. that we hold Very allegedly dear, dear in mm -hmm. this country. Yes, supposedly. But this, but this, um, this guy, um, Dave, Dave Rich, Rich, I mean, it boils down. There's one sentence in this where he basically gives the game away, and he says the IHRA definition also recognises that nowadays anti-Semitism often appears in discourse relating to Israel either by targeting Israel itself as a proxy for Jews or by repeating old anti-Semitic slanders with Israel or Zionist swapped in for the word Jew. Ugh. Now, the reason I find this so... I find this really, really offensive mm -hmm. on a number of levels. Mm -hmm. One, um, Israel calls itself the Jewish state, mm -hmm. but I know that there are many people within the Jewish community who disown and frankly despise everything that Israel stands for. I have marched with Jews yes. um, oh, absolutely. In, in demonstrations against Israel's bombing mm -hmm. of, of Gaza. Yes. And there are demonstrations in Israel by Orthodox Jews mm -hmm. and in, in oh, America. Yes. Well, and they get treated abysmally, don't they? Water cannoned exactly. in Tel Aviv by, exactly. by the Israeli forces. Yes. But Orthodox the, Jews. But the other thing ab cannoned. about this, well, there are two other things. One... It implies that that we are so unsophisticated and stupid that we are unable to uh, discriminate between the actions of a state uh -huh. and an entire people. Yes. Okay. Oh, sure. And that anyone who tries not to disentangle the two are accused of racism as a means of obscuring the racism by the state of Israel. Yes. And I think this is morally and intellectually yes. dishonest. Absolutely. It is it's but almost sick-making, yes. vomit-making hypocrisy. And the fact that, you know, these, you know, people, people like, what's his face, Dave Rich, are given this platform to spout crap. Oh, yeah, The Guardian. And yes, there is absolutely. no way of answering him. I've, I've done various bits of research to try to contact him. Oh, right. Because he's actually involved in all sorts of different groups. There's no way of contacting him. Or at least I would probably need several hours more to find an email address. But can you not make a comment no, online? you can't make a comment on here, no. Oh, right. And it's just... And I think one of the reasons for that is that the Guardian knows that... They're drilling on do dodgy ground. they would spark a load of abuse. You know, it's just... I suppose oh. one can write into the Guardian, but whether oh. your letter would be printed is another issue. Yes. But it's worth a try. 
It is actually. worth I a mean, try. I mean, I would say that it really is seriously worth a try. I haven't, look, I mean, because I do read The Guardian online, I haven't had time today, but um, actually the letters, it's not something that's easily available, you know, on to the online version of the paper, but actually it would be something that's really important to see, to see whether there is free speech. Yes. You know, because I think it would question very much what The Guardian stands for in totality. But if you follow the line of, of, of this guy, yes. and, and also, for instance, the Jewish Board of Deputies, then actually exercising your free speech to criticise Israel means that you're then open to the, to the claim that you are anti-Semitic. So you can criticise Israel for being racist, and then you face... Being, being call, called a racist yourself. yourself. Or just called, yes, oh, absolutely. And you see, the, the, the Jewish Board of Deputies have, you know, and, and, and these rabbis have, present, have taken the moral high ground or tried to. But there to. are Jewish groups that, as you say, because yeah. you've marched with them. Yes, you know, there are. That, and they're not innumerous, are but, they? But they don't get the coverage. No, of course they don't. Why not? These people do. And the thing is, yes. they take the moral high ground. And yet, for instance, the Jewish Board of Deputies, you remember when all of those Palestinian demonstrators were shot dead? Oh, yes. Uh, Recently. The Jewish Mike Board May. of Deputies issued a press release the day after saying, oh, well, it's all very sad, but then went on to blame the Palestinians for their own demise. Oh, yes, and with the parents. How do they let the parents... How do the parents let their children demonstrate? Oh, it wasn't that. What they were saying was that the Palestinians were all Hamas supporters. Oh, well, they always say uh, that, And, don't and they? therefore brought it on themselves, whereas actually any, any of the... I mean, the news reports, for instance, by Channel 4, uh, they had reporters on there basic, at the scene who were basically saying, OK, Hamas were active, but they actually um, interviewed various people on the ground who said, you know, they're not, they're not supporters of Hamas, but they've got nothing else to lose. Well, and actually I've read articles of, of people saying that they have, their life is so awful, they would almost rather lose their lives than, uh, you know, by demonstrating than to do nothing. Yes. And that's just so awful. And there's the article that you circulated today um, of the... of the 85% of Palestinians um, killed by Israeli forces were killed in extrajudicial actions, i.e. they were shot dead uh, at the, you know, on the moment. They could have yes, been protesting or there could have yes. been some sort of mm -hmm. contretemps or whatever. Uh, there was no judicial process at all. Yes. And you can guarantee uh, that, the, that the officers who, can, who, who, who did the shootings would not face any comeback. Mm -hmm. And to my mind, this clearly illustrates that and the fact that they will take Palestinian land at will yes. shows the respective value of, 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 the, of the lives of the different people. Yes. Palestinians don't matter in no. this. But remember, actually, when we were discussing this the other day, and you were, because, I mean, sure, I have my own views, and my views are very similar to yours, but you are much better informed than I about the, the whole history, I would say. Okay. Anyway, so you were um, telling me about how um, Israel had decimated, destroyed yes. cultural heritage sites yes. I mean, of, in of places, the Palestinians. In places like Nablus, for yes. instance, and not only would, would this be done in sort of like controlled sort of demolition processes, but also they would, through acts of vandalism, IDF, of, uh, soldiers would destroy buildings of cultural significance, and basically the issue here is that Israel, this, you know, this. What, so right. They want to remove any, you know, they, they want to remove ultimately any claim, any historic claim that the Palestinians might have to the land. Well, can I just ask? Sorry, because when you, I didn't know this, and when you told me, I it made me wonder what was the difference between that and what ISIS do. It's very um, similar. You know, and yet the world goes up in arms because they've, you know, they've destroyed various cultural centres. Exactly. You know, but actually this doesn't even get a mention. No. And the thing is, also, I mean, um, Israel just recently um, passed a law to declare itself uh, officially a Jewish state. 
oh, yes, destroying so the cultural evidence of other people's occupation of that land that predate them as that well. That predate them um, is is simply a a uh, predate a, them by thousands of years. Well, no. Um, if you look at back at biblical times, I mean, there you know Jews lived in that land, but then again, so did um, um, you know other peoples as well. Uh, or, and it's interesting because you know you call them. Uh, Semitic peoples. They weren't all Jewish, whereas you now t t use the term anti-Semitic. Just to refer uh, to Jews. And it's only used to refer to the Jews, whereas but the Palestinians, Palestinians are Semitic. And some, some um, uh, of Jordanian, who are now Jordanians and Egyptians, yes. are parts of the people that spoke one of the Semitic languages. Right. You know, whereas, you know, the whole narrative is all about anti-Jewish yes. racism. Yes. And so race... You know, my view is once you once you raise the importance of what of racism against one people a vis a vis everyone else, you're then getting into really very difficult territory, and that is exactly what Israel is about. Yes, and it just makes me sick. And <laughs> actually, I, well, absolutely, and so infuriating. I mean, um, just recently, I was having, you know, a, a sort of raging myself about um, as I frequently do about what happens to the Palestinians and how they're treated and so then I was told oh but it's you know if it wasn't for Hamas Israel would treat them better you know it's only because Israel and so ends up being tit for tat and and so people's understanding you know either you have people who say that Israel can never do any wrong so you've got that group of people that Israel has to be right on any account. It doesn't really matter that actually Hamas are actually the source of all of the problems of why, you know, th there is trouble between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And that because there's a tit for tat, but actually when you consider that actually... Palestine, uh, uh, and for certainly the West Bank, it's got so little access to even get... It doesn't get clean water, it doesn't yes. get electricity, you know, um, they've got no passports, they can't get to... Now they've actually blockaded all borders, so that actually I don't think there's any point that, that, any, that they can get goods in or out. Yes. How, what kind of missiles are they using? You know, they're going to be sort of like... Homemade. Well, that's exactly it. When, when, homemade little devices. When Israel talks about, you know, that rockets are fired into Israel, we're not talking about any like, any sort of like military equivalents here. We're talking about we're talking about homemade pipe bombs, effectively, yes, and against which, against one of the best equipped military engines in in the forces in the whole of the yes, world. And their secrets, you know, their secret service is yes. actually one of the most brutal. And um, infiltrating globally, isn't it? Yeah. Now, the person that we're talking about who, who claims that, well, if Hamas weren't around... Um, it'd all you know, be nice it and hunky-dory. Well, that doesn't explain why, for instance, um, you know, Palestinians were were murdered in, in large numbers in Shatila and, and Sabra... Oh, God, that was awful, um, wasn't uh, that? ...refugee yes. camps in Lebanon. 6,000. That wouldn't explain why, for instance, um, Jewish militias, Israeli militias... Um, were involved with um, uh, ethnic cleansing around not, during the mid 1940s in the run up to the. Oh, that was terrible! I remember exactly. reading about Menachem Begin because it was Menachem Begin who led some of those groups of people, and I know he'd been in concentration camps, and you would have thought that maybe it would raise your standard of behaviour to other people rather than to go raping and pillaging, which is what he led his and did himself as far as i understand i do not know com completely but actually i know because it was leon uris who wrote i think was it oh jerusalem or something like that who described the appalling behaviors and leon J uris i mean a J jewish man as far yes as it exactly was, you know and i mean it was to me it was just absolutely horrifying and i read that in like the 1970s? Yeah. You know. Two things. Hamas. Uh, there is evidence to suggest that the Israeli intelligence service um, fostered the creation of Hamas to try ah. to, und to, try to undermine um, Fatah, the PLO. Oh, right. Because on the basis that if you divide your opposition, then the yes. opposition is weakened. Uh-huh. But to come back, and perhaps this might be a point to finish on, 
the Holocaust. The holo- I mean, there is no getting away from it. The Holocaust was an abomination. Yes. It was, it was um, just a hideous oh, blot on humanity. Yes. But surely the one lesson to take away from the Holocaust is, is the destruction simply. of one people by another is wrong whoever it's by and whoever, whoever it's, it's against. Mm-hmm. Surely the lesson is you do not dehumanise and dispossess and murder an entire people for any reason. Surely that is the lesson yes. that the Holocaust Teaches. taught us. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Anyway. I think on that On note, that note. Yes. We'll say bye for now. Bye for now indeed. <laughs> <laughs>